What is this? I was told to come here and talk about the Mr. Dodgy Invitational because um, it's going to be such a fun little inside the tournament. The thing that started as a joke by a nerd on Twitter, but now it's a real event with Grill Grandmasters playing in it. Nobody won't watch it, but we'll give us so much street cred in the chess community. And you know we need it because there's so much chess drama. Oh no, they have the pork champs. Oh no, they have the, the clutch thing, Casas by Caruana. What can we do so that someone pays attention to us, to the <laughs> Mr. Dodgy Invitational? Anish Giri versus David Navarra. These are serious times. Full solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. It's not the time for your silly chess drama. It's not time for me to commentate on a blitz match that I do not care about the slightest bit. Anish Giri, David Navarra. Who cares who wins this? Keep making a little insider jokes about a picture of a man on a horse, but without me. Thank you. Bye. My name is Jan Gustafsson. I could not be more excited. It's very Alpha, Alpha Zero, huh? Sacrifice. Alpha Nielsen. Alpha Nielsen, Peter Hein Nielsen, of course, working a lot with computers. And it shows here. And he plays Queen to C2 after some contemplating. Wow. Does not but capture the pawn. He's taking this very serious. He's done years and years of preparation. Also, I don't want to make this too much of a Peter love fest, but would you agree that he's looking very good too? Hang on. Yeah, he's just completely winning, of course. This is bad. White has two pieces against the rook, but in such a situation, the two pieces are, the two minor pieces are very superior to rook. He just so resigns. Know? That means Korobov wins the match, no? Wow. Yeah. Congratulations to Anton Korobov, the first semi finalist. Switch to Peter Svidler against Niels. Where are you? Niels? Also, not holding back. Showing some ideas in whatever this is. Some night off. Now, up to GF6. There is no longer checking out. Peter Smithler wins and equalizes the match. Oh, he hey. blundered, he blundered, he blundered, he blundered. He missed Bishop of 8, yeah? He missed Bishop of 8. Camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, some yeah. head shaking. It's the, no, it's the, it's the... He's just nodding, he's saying to himself, I'm still in this. Wow. Oh, it was the last game as well, wow. Bishop oh. C5. Bishop E3, though? This, this is winning on the oh. spot. Oh, this is... It's he a counter blunder. And now he Peter is going to do. Head. Now, yeah, he's going to do this. I'm so sorry to win your thing. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, now he's. Stop it. I mean, stop it. It's fake, yeah. fake shaking. Fake no, shaking. I mean, really. Yeah, yeah, no. I, like, I yeah. really don't like this bad winners. <laughs> oh, the drama. But Peter Swidler oh. comes through and wins six and a half, five and a half after being down two points against Nils Gondelius. Congratulations to Mr. Peter. You were sort of the great Swedish hope you are representing the organizing country are you are you very sad the tournament is over for you? Uh, yes I want to apologize to my uh, to my country for this performance hmm. uh, of course and to Mr. Doji personally of course I know Symphonic Knight was asking Mr. Doji was this all supposed to be about Giri is that a complaint, Symphonic Night, or are you pleasantly surprised that it's all about Giri? Also, Wait, what's I wouldn't the say it's all about Giri, it's also a lot about Laurent. Just the Davids, they're, they're not getting their fair share of attention. They have to... One of the Davids has to beat the other David. David is going for David's throat by playing Knight takes H7. The justification is, if this gets taken, Queen H5 check, using the pin and winning the game. While after Queen H7, Bishop C6, White picks up another pawn. This is it. David Navarra wins the game and the match. A very tough fight.
Please don't I'm watch my game. Quite sure. Please don't watch my game. It's a bad game. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Let's start with the next one, okay? Okay. Now I badly need to see the game. Come on, show me no, the no, game. No, 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 no. Please don't watch the game. Please don't watch the game. Come on, guys. The good news is I can't see it yet. So Excellent. Don't Nobody worry about can. It. Nobody can. It's it's a test game. Uh, it's a disaster. Ugh. I don't care, my friend. No, the, the good thing about playing Laura as opposed to like playing here Magnus in this position is that is that you're playing Laura. The problem is if he wins this one. He will be happy even after losing the match. And Laura's well, my friend, so don't get me wrong, but I don't like if he gets too happy. That's the thing. You just need a chance and then you can make it happen. And you're the man. Yeah, all the jokes aside, he's a very strong player. I mean, you see he has like 3000 rating on uh, on his account. Yes. He, and he's played very well throughout. Uh, and I think it shouldn't be like my victory shouldn't be taken for granted and i'm really proud of it and uh, i'm proud of the way we both played um, that's what i'd like to say so uh, what is your question so you just said a long version of ggo yeah <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hello everyone and welcome to the semi-finals of the mr dodgy invitational Of course. Thank you so much, Mr. Dodgy, for keeping this tournament going on this Saturday. When I don't know, many people may would have liked to break, spend some time with their families, get ready for Carlson Caruana, the clutch match. But instead, we have the semifinals of arguably the best Mr. Dodgy tournament that is going to happen all year oh and i'm reading magnus tweeted today giri korobov not even thinking about watching it wow <laughs> more <laughs> so he keeps on making publicity yeah to the tournament you think that's it anton we just resign wow, wow. six wow. and a half two and a half yeah, i did not expect be. that how to how to be happy oh anish coming okay so time to to go for me. I, I will come back a bit <laughs> okay, later. Okay. Congratulations, Danish. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. You, played, you both played better than uh, what we expected. So. <laughs> I agree. I would think there's like three types of people. There are trolls who are meaning well, like you and me and Mr. Dodgy. There are people who are just always very nice, like Niels or Swidler, who yeah, wouldn't even yeah. troll. And then yeah. there are just mean, vicious people like Laurent. What about Night G3? Yeah. It's probably a very good move. So I think make it made in two. Oops, Taking a pawn. To me. It's resigned. Yeah, yeah. It. I think so. Yeah. He, yeah. he resigned actually. Yeah. And Peter, uh, Peter is being gracious. He allows checkmate in one on the board. Yeah. Hmm. Fantastic it's, performance it's, by David Nava. Very, very impressive. It was really extraordinary because I'm not too used to coming late, really. But yeah, uh, I don't. I mean, we've played with people the same club and so on. I've never, I've never, I think, in my life seen David be late for anything. So. Actually, I said because we didn't know when it hadn't started like three minutes past. Okay, Peter must have forgotten something because I'm sure David is not. <laughs> late. No. That is, that is absolutely the correct take. Yeah. Maybe you didn't want that picture of a horse badly enough? Is that it? Is How that it? dare you? Hello everybody and welcome to the final of the Mr. Dodge Invitational, a match that I personally am looking forward 
talked uh, a great deal. I believe it will be very exciting. We have Anish Giri, the Dutch number one and candidate in the year 2020, facing off against David Navarra, who's shown some fantastic chess to get here in the semifinals, destroyed Peter Svidler with a score of seven to two. And I believe with that result, we can no longer be sure that Anish is the favorite going into this, but the games have already kicked off. So without further ado, let's jump right into the action. David Navarra from the Czech Republic, often called the nicest guy, guy in the chess world and Anish Giri with the black pieces, often wrongly called the most drawish player in chess. They are discussing a line of the Slav, which hmm, is a line that Anish plays every now and then, and he plays a clever move in knight to e4, challenging David to play the most tricky move, bishop to d3, which includes a pawn sacrifice. But Navarra is not known for his opening prowess. That's the area where Anish Giri has an edge. Um, so it's clever to challenge him to sacrifice a hot pawn here. Well, instead, Navarra plays a more peaceful line he takes and goes rook to d1, but that does not put a lot of pressure on the black position. Now, knight to d7 is possible. Anish goes for a somewhat surprising move, pawn to c5, trying to break the center open. Mm, not sure how I feel about that move. D takes c5. What was your idea, Anish? Queen to e7. It's trying to equalize directly. Which might work. Might not work. Rook to d4 comes to mind. Knight to e5. But I guess if this pawn can be reclaimed, then it's fine. And maybe David will just continue developing b3. Bishop d2. Yeah, bishop d2 played. Bishop takes c5, bishop c3, knight to c6, with a roughly equal position. Anish, one of the greater equalizers out there. Many people say a better equalizer than Denzel Washington has once again gotten the job done. And many people said Denzel did not do the same thing in the equalizer two. Equalizer one, great move. Rook f to d8, knight d2, attacking the bishop on e4. The bishop has to retreat, bishop to g6. And we can see the pawn structure on the king side is symmetrical, while the pawn structure on the queen side, one could even argue slightly in black's favor, as the b4 square is weakened due to this pawn being on a4, can't move back. But black can still cover b5 square on his end. And he tries to occupy that square, but it's hard to believe that he has a serious edge here, some of like bishop b5. And I would guess that mass simplifications are still the most likely scenario. But we shall see if either of the players manages to make something happen here. My feeling is that this is sort of a warm-up game where they're both trying to play very solidly. And a draw is the most likely outcome. Insert joke here about a draw is always the most likely outcome if Anish is playing. The truth is, a draw is always the most likely outcome. Any two top players. But in blitz, this is five minute blitz games. First to six and a half points wins. That outcome is less likely than in classical games because, of course, the level of accuracy is less high. Here, Bishop f1, has he spotted knight to a2? Or is this a blunder? I believe after knight a2, there is still queen to c7. And rook to d7, queen c8, or queen b8 check. So it's probably not a blunder, but a clever little provocation. And Anish goes king h7, just getting out of any checks. Now threatening to put his knight here in white, where to parry that with queen to c7. But of course, Navarra does not give him a chance to do it. Queen c5 played, queen takes c5. Rook takes c5. White has a c file, but it's a very cosmetic advantage that I would not expect. 
anything else that it brought in this game. Still, it ain't over till it's over, as Lenny Kravitz used to say. Derek DC. Greetings, by the way, to the Chess24 chat, to the Twitch chat, to everyone, the thousand of people watching this. I hope we're in for a fun match, obviously. More fun chess to come today. But this one, the tale of a man on a horse with a dream to have a tournament of eight strong grandmasters. Or, no, no fresh jokes here. To have a tournament of eight strong grandmasters and then to make it happen through nothing but grit, determination, begging, bargaining, selling his soul to Anish Giri, promising to work for him for free for the next 10 to 15 years is just very inspirational in these difficult times. And I could not be more excited to be here. I'm not sure if Anish feels the same way after Bishop takes a six, because if he were to recapture, he'd have a bad rook ending. So he has to go on the offensive with rook d2 check, which is probably fine. But Bishop back to e2, because rook takes b2, then pawn to a6, I was briefly thinking about, but it does not look like that's breaking through. Instead, king to e1 was played, rook takes b2, bishop d3 check, pawn to a6 is still a bit of a nuisance. Anish, do you have to be careful here? I guess he's still fine. g6, let's say a6, rook to a2, control to pawn. Still fine, hard to do it again. g6, a6 on the board. Rook a2 to stop this pawn from advancing further. Looks logical to me. Maybe he's worried about a takes b7, bishop takes, and rook c7. Yeah, and that's why he goes king g7, keeping an eye on the f7 pawn. He is smart, that Giri guy. West Bishop is saying, Jan, they really left you alone. No, there might be someone joining later on. I do not know yet. Mm. That someone could very well be someone who did not win a picture of a horse and is very upset about it. What's his background? This would be me completely gone. I think we put that background, no? I don't know. Who left that other background in there? Dr. De Soto is saying, poor Jan, work all day. If you define working from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. as work all day, also if you define what I'm doing here as working, rook b6, what's going on, Anish? Do you miss a7? He has a check and rook a1. It's actually a smart way to clarify the situation, some small tactics. If this pawn were to advance, the rook will give check and then stop it. Therefore, a takes b7 is played. And now bishop takes g2. Now it's actually David who has to be a little careful not to end up being a pawn down here. <clears throat> he is a pawn down, but he will say it's still an easy draw, which it probably is. However, in blitz, you never want to end up in a situation where your opponent has every excuse to continue playing on forever. Also, it's 5-0. So technically, or theoretically, if the clock gets a little lower, there is no safety net in form of increment for Navarra, who I would assume is somewhat slower than Giri, who's recently been playing a lot of bullet on the internet. Therefore, dangerous spot for Navarra here. The position is a draw with these pawns on dark squares. There's not too much to hope for, but Anish has mentioned many times that he considers flagging to be a part of the game and that he does not want to participate in the nice offs that we've seen in some other matches in this tournament. Therefore, Navarra has his work cut out for him here. Then again, I'm not sure how, if Anish will feel like winning this on time could be bad karma. Usually with an extra point, you, you try to bring the king to h4 here and see if that has any effect. Mm. King on g3 stops that. Now you need to look for a new plan. It won't be easy, but David is down to 14 seconds, and we will see. It's the problem, yes, here it's impossible to force all the pieces off the board. Well, Anish can start a new attempt with a king move. Of course, he knows that this position is a draw, as does everyone involved, but it's not gonna work for David because Anish, with the extra pawn, has every right to pretend 
to be playing for the full point and on the clock boom there you go that's chess in the year 2020 these kids flagging left right and center anish giri takes the first game and navara maybe he was a little too optimistic somewhere around here he could probably just you know simplify go a takes b7 i don't know one two three four one two three three wrap it up by a tough start for him <laughs> don g is saying what that was a drawn position yeah but black had a pawn had an extra pawn and time is part of the game anish has been very explicit about that in the interview he also explained how the ethics have changed a little there so yeah if you wanna if you wanna hold it against him feel free i wouldn't because i've always thought that yeah time is part of the game if you make your moves quicker you also risk some quality maybe yeah next game one zero for guirinho He is playing the London system and Navarra goes for queen b6, very aggressive. Typically, players play knight c6, or cd, followed by knight c6, some a6, or knight c6, queen b6, knight c6, e6. But queen b6 directly is asking white for aggressive measures. And we all know that Anish Giri does not have to be provoked. Okay, he does have to be provoked a little bit, but he has been provoked a little bit here. And he goes for knight c3, queen d2, long castle. It looks dangerous for black. The d5 pawn is on fire, under fire. Can we take it? He didn't take it, probably long castle, so. Hmm. On to e6, I still don't trust it. Some e4. Feels like there should be something in the air. But Anish, who, according to his critics, is more of a statical, classical player than an aggressive firebrand even though such categories with players that are 2780 plus are always very very artificial anish decides to play in a common manner with king to b1 now knight to e5 basically if black were to play bishop e7 and short castles he'd just be fine therefore white has to start bothering him before that happens. And I'm not quite sure how he wants to do it after Bishop e7 here. We shall see. Mr. Dodge is saying, although I support ruthless flaggery, flagging Navarra, double question mark, what a monster. But I think Navarra would be upset if Anish made an exception for him, not flagging him. Do you think he wants to be treated differently just because he's a nicer guy than everybody else? I do not think so. I think David would have... I can't speak for him. I'm not sure how unhappy he would have been about not being played. But yeah, we can't. We can't have double, triple standards there. You're either a flagger or you're not. And Anish has put his cards on the flagging table very, very clearly. Hmm. Sionet is saying, you people hate it when Anish draws, hate it when Anish loses, hate it when Anish wins. What do you want from him? I think we want him to draw from a winning position so that we can then say, this guy Giri, he's all openings and Twitter talk, but he can't do it on a rainy November night in Stoke. And therefore, we feel better about ourselves because we think if I only studied all these chess books and use all these chess engines that Anish Giri uses, I could also be a 2780 player. So I believe that is what we want him to do. But I'm not sure. It is true. Anish also summed it up nicely. That it's hard to win once you have a certain image. He's saying if he were to win this tournament, it would be qualified as a weak tournament and why is he playing in this well if he were not to win he would also be trolled about it i'm not sure i think he had a wittier point about the lose-lose situation he was in but it was something along those lines as for the game it has simplified quite a bit queens have come off the board 
The position looks roughly equal. The clock position also looks roughly equal for now. Hmm. Therefore, what can we expect? More dirty flagging? Maybe Anish feels he's flagged enough for the first two games. He will now go for a draw. I do not know. Red Ribbon 3700 is saying Anish is, Anish is perpetually in a lose lose situation. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for Anish's mental fortitude because I don't think he gets a lot of real hate, but he gets so much flack about anything he does. And to have it not affect him very much, or at least seeming like it doesn't affect him very much. Mm. I find impressive. Because for me, one guy on Twitter writes, Jan is not funny. I'm upset. At GM Jan Gustafsson. <laughs> or even worse, I say, funny for a German. That tells me even more. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, it's not, must be very tough for, or I, it would seem to me that it would be very tough for Anish to deal with all these, this trolling, the not really hate, but the half jokingly negative feedback he's getting. And it doesn't seem very tough for him, which I admire greatly. But maybe I'm drawing the wrong conclusions from all of this. I don't know. Mid position, like still fine. Looks a seven now, targeting the pawn on e3. Therefore, forcing the capture. Look to see one what is a move he would like to play, but I guess rook takes e3 is possible. And then after the check to cover it with bishop to f8. Therefore, Giri goes knight d1, followed by knight f2, offering a move repetition, as, as he does. And that was accepted. Draw in game number two, bringing the score to one and a half half in Giri's, Giri's favor. Mm -hmm. Wow. No breaks, huh? They just keep playing and playing. Should I tweet something, by the way? Maybe I should tweet something, no? Hmm. What should I tweet? I should also do commentary. Stop. Navarra goes for the system with queen to e1. In, which we've seen the other day, the so-called King's Indian attack. I think he's used it against Swidler. Giri plays one of the many salt systems. And Giri, with all his trolling, he does work pretty diligently on his chest. So I'm almost certain he's had a look at the games that Navarra played against Swidler. He probably drew his own conclusions that this line he feels he can neutralize. And therefore, he's happy to repeat that. The pawn structure in the center is fairly symmetrical, so typically white tries either something like knight h4, knight f5, g4, or knight c4, hoping to get b4 in. Knight c4 played when black can either react with a5, but that would become a bit of a target, or go rook a8 followed by bishop f8, which I think is the right thing to do here. And as usual, Dr. Geary knows what's happening. Also, does Anish have a new background? Have we talked about that? What happened to this very elaborate scenery behind him that he constructed with some hand-picked items? Now it's just, you know, cold, dark, cynical, green screen with a black background. Can't stand it. Show us how you live, people. Not all this corporate green screen stuff. As for the game, roughly equal still. Blue Orlik is saying, what about your background, Jan? Can't fool you, eh, Blue Orlik? 
you're so sharp. I wish I had thought of that. That, oh no, I have a green screen myself before criticizing Anish's green screen. Congratulations, sir. You win today's prize for Twitch alertness. Hmm. Pawn pusher saying, yes, everybody knows the identity identity of at Mr. Dochi. He's major. His name is all over the Swedish newspapers, no? I did not know his name until the day before yesterday. But it seems like he's decided, you know, I can't go mainstream as a character. I have to show the people my name, my face. My horses, mm. my countryside, and he's no longer in hiding, which I respect, Mr. Dodgy. You have nothing to hide. Mm. Not sure if that's true. As for this game, it's still symmetrical. Sale Milk 94 is saying, My Dodge isn't his real name. I'm shocked. Now it's Mr. Dodge. We have action, rook to a5, pawn to a6, queen to a1. This pawn on e4 has been picked up and the pawn on e5 was still protected. So Navarra is trying to win his material back on the queen side but after rook takes a6 due to the fact that this bishop is covering this rook. Giri could just take on b4. So he's picked up a pawn and I'm not sure if this went according to plan for David Navarra. By rook d1, bishop c5. He's currently a pawn down and he will need some trickery, which I do not yet see in order. <clears throat> to stay in the game. Takes e5 is a move you would like to make work, but I do not think it's done. it does. Takes, takes, takes on g2. Now this would be hanging if I takes e7. Oh no, I'm not smart enough, but he did not do it, and it looked like it was hanging material. There yeah, we start with bishop g2. But now, Giri, once again, with the tricks, he's saying queen takes b5, I have rook b8, and your bishop on b2 is loose. You do not have anywhere else to go. So is Anish Giri winning this one? Has he broken David Navarro's confidence with that flag drop in game number one? Is Anish Giri just a monster? Mm -hmm. So is it too early to start debating where this ranks on the list of Giri's greatest achievements. He's a piece up, Navarra tries some last ditch efforts with knight g5, targeting f7, a bishop g6 covers that. And I do not see any compensation for the missing piece. Anish Giri, too calm, too collected, is off to a great start in this one. Navarra does not want to resign yet. Maybe he also feels because of the flagging game one that there is no no need to be nice and to resign a piece down which yeah i never thought was offensive even in the old days anyone can resign whenever they want and as long as you feel like there's any chance you should absolutely continue the game unless you have your own reasons like i don't know you want to save energy 
you feel there's just no hope left. Like now with two pieces down, you will probably say, okay, enough is enough. And resign, yeah. Because after rook b4, this bishop on e4 is also dropping. Giri playing great chess. Anish Giri seems dedicated to win that picture of a man on a horse. Although it has to be said, the first prize is also $2,000. I think it's dollars. I'm not sure if dollars are used, but I think it's dollars. Which is not too bad for three days of playing some blitz matches. No, Anish, 2,000, man on a horse. Fame, your third biggest tournament victory of all time after Shenzhen, Rachel Emilia, and before the Iceland Open. What's not to like? Not there yet, of course, but he is off to a great start. Up two and a half, half. First to six and a half. Does win. Do we, before we get into the theory of this line, I think it's supposed to play G6 for whatever reason. Do we have a picture of the first prize? Do we have a picture of a man on a horse? Shall we show it very briefly to the people so they know what's at stake? Here it is. Wow, that is a picture very much worth fighting for. Is Mr. Dodgy filming his own version of Robin Hood, Man in Tights, in his backyard? Is he playing the Sheriff of Nottingham? Is that what's happening? Okay, enough of that picture. Enough. It will hopefully find a place on Giri's or Navarra's wall in eternity so they can look at it every single day of their lives from tomorrow on. But I believe we should never have to see that picture again. Mr. Dodger is saying chess memes horse rider. I'm a triple threat now. What do people, where does this triple threat thing come from? Is it someone that can act, sing, and dance? Is that the original triple threat? Yeah, so this, this is all theory. I guess Giri want to catch Navara, or not all of this, but at the very least until. Somewhere around here. I guess Giri wanted to catch Navarra off guard in some Catalan, but Navarra knew this line and he seems to be equalizing quite comfortably here. It's what in the business they call a semi bluff. You hope your opponent does not know what to do. And if he does, you're also not worse. So it's just chess. Farofan is saying basketball, the triple threat position. But that's not where it comes from, no? That sounds like a triangle Phil Jackson thing. Like he can pass, he can drive to the basket, or he can shoot from there. But I don't think that's the origin of the triple threat. Isn't that some Fred Astaire thing or something? Sing, dance, act? Please educate us. Europa Master is asking, where's Peter Heine today? Does he prepare Magnus for the great final? I would guess he's busy with Magnus stuff. Frankly, I haven't asked him. I've asked a different Peter if he can join for this final. And he probably will a little later. Although I'm only like 68% sure. Mr. Dodger is saying, who has been watching the show for all three days? Is that a question mark? Do you want like to have hundreds of people say, I have been watching the show for all three days, or are you saying, Mr. Lurgy, that Magnus has been watching the show for all three days? Mm -hmm. Professor Mistake is saying, pity, I like Jan, but I prefer when there's someone with him. That's a bit boring today. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not enough for you by myself. And I do not disagree, but don't blame me. Blame the tournament director. 
complaints to um what was it again mr dodgy at chessable.com or maybe also suggestions for the next ideas you could pitch some for the next event you could pitch some players that you would want in there i believe that he would appreciate your feedback as for this game knight to c4 played it still looks like players know what they're doing question mark Rook takes d3, king takes f6, restoring the material balance. If rook f3 check, the king can just go away. This cannot be captured because of the pin. Um, you could throw a knight e8 check, but I'm not sure how much that changes. King f8, rook takes d3, king takes e8. Mm. Something like rook d7 or king g2. But it feels to me like it should be equality. Bamboozle saying Laurent needling missed. I believe. Did I ask Laurent? I can't recall. I think he said something. Okay, I can join on Saturday, but on Sunday I have a date. So if possible, I, you can do alone on Sunday. I believe he said exactly that. I might be confusing. As for the game, I also believe that it's going along on the lines I thought it would go that yeah these pieces get exchanged then the pawns disappear on the queen side and now one can either shake hands or try to flag a minute down or even better Navarra could try to flag Anish from here because Navarra has extra time on the clock. David do you have it in you? Wow This is shocking, ladies and gentlemen. Just when we thought I was all by myself, Mr. Dodgy has heard the complaints of the people. And as the people pleaser that he is, he is joining the show. Welcome, the man himself, the organizer, the mastermind, Mr. Dodgy. What's happening? Hello, Jan. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um... How has the tournament been for you? Are you happy with the participants? Are you unhappy with some of the participants? What's happening behind the scenes? I'm happy with most of the participants. Um, I do feel like Peter didn't want it enough. And right, I agree. In Peter, a lot of ways, Peter Fiddler, that is. Peter Heine Nielsen Peter Fiddler, wanted no. it badly. Yeah, uh, Peter Fiddler just didn't want it enough. And um, he paid the price. So that was, that was disappointing. But what can you do? It is a bit surprising because Peter Swidler, he claimed that no one wanted it more than him. Do you think he put too much pressure on himself by making that public statement, maybe? I think he put a lot of pressure on himself, but maybe not enough. Maybe he needed more pressure. to. Um, maybe some external it. pressure. Can you go F4 check here? Look at four. I don't know, I was about to blunder this, but Navarra won't. So now yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna be talking about chess. So. Nah, this game is over. It's a draw. <laughs> also, Geary was behind on the flock, so on the clock, so we don't get any flagging attempts. I don't think David Navarra will start joining the, the flagging game. He doesn't have it in him. What do you think? I don't think he's gonna flag. I think he should, though. Of course he should. I think he should just go for it. What have you got to lose? He does have a picture of you on a horse and some money to lose by not flagging. Yeah, so then he should fight in every game. Maybe his reputation as the nice guy, nicest guy in chess could take a hit if he joins the, the flaggery. Maybe, but is that too much of a price to pay? I don't know. It would be for me, but it depends how badly you want the picture on the horse, too. And Can you tell us a little bit about the shooting? How did the picture on the horse come across? Did you have a camera team from the 
local news or something to record that that event? How did it go? Uh, there was a photographer from the local newspaper, uh, Noran, and I think it's getting published tomorrow. I did make sure that I mentioned Chess Twenty Four, so hopefully we put wow. it in, in the local Swedish news. Finally, the chess market of northern Sweden will be will be captured. Yeah, I, I don't think I mentioned Chessable, so I might um, have a conversation with someone tomorrow and get told off. But right, hey, home. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. There has been a lot of talk on Twitter about your beef or your horse meat with Magnus Carlsen. What, what's true? What's just creating artificial chess drama there? What's happening? Um, I think it's all true. Uh, I, I asked him to play, didn't want to play. Um, and then he's just telling other people not to play as well. So, Who did he stop from playing? Can you reveal it? No, I th no, he wasn't telling other people not to play. He was telling other people not to watch. Ah, okay. okay. I should be careful. Shouldn't, shouldn't lie about it. But no, he was definitely telling people not to watch. And he shared the link when he sent that. So they knew exactly what not to watch. Um, but don't you think he shot an own goal there by sharing the link with his tremendous reach, telling people not to watch? Maybe he got people to watch that wouldn't have watched in the first place? It's possible, but I think he would have to make he would have to share the link to make sure that no one accidentally watches it, so they know exactly where not to go. <laughs> that makes sense because they could have clicked on that spot of the internet accidentally, but now they knew not to go there. Yeah, that is yeah. Amazing. So it was it was for the best. Right. Um, Do you feel that Magnus also might have scheduled his match against Fabiano Caruana to outshine the finals of this event? No, I think he made sure that, that, that his event didn't clash with this event. So that's why it doesn't start until this one's finished. I think he made sure that he'd be free to watch this one. So, yeah, I think he's definitely watching. Fair enough. As for this game, it's very boring. Navarra is slightly, slightly better. At high levels, these positions are considered to be draw-ish and very defendable. But in the Blitz game, it's not a very pleasant task. So I have to defend this without any hopes for activity. He's just eternally slightly worse because of the... Yeah, IQP. but he likes, he likes these things, doesn't he? I don't think he does. I think all this work he does on openings is mainly to avoid suffering in slightly worse positions. And more often than not, he doesn't have to. He's resilient when he's lost, when he can feel he can play freely. But when it's slightly worse, I'm not sure how much he enjoys it. Yeah, that could be true. I've got Navarra's book behind me. Let me see. Mm -hmm. What's it called again? My, my Chess World? I'm going to put my headphones on. <laughs> Let me see. My Chess World. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's really Chess good. I've not by read David Navarra. I've not read a lot of it, but no, looks pretty good. It's very big as well. Excellent value for like uh, price per page. Wow, six. That, that's what I look for. That's what I look for in a book. Hmm. I tried making it through War and Peace, but after like two hundred pages, and some guy had traveled from somewhere to somewhere else, I gave up. Yeah, that's a very long book. Too long. I think... Uh, yeah, I did read it, but I didn't enjoy it. It's... Are you more of a Tolstoy or more of a Dostoevsky type? Mm, neither. I read Crime and Punishment as well, and that was just... Boring. Just like throwing a car chase every now and again, or, or a gunfight or something. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. What can I you do? Not read crime and punishment. I watched a lot of Law and Order. Yeah, it's the same thing. I think it's based on it. Mm. Probably is. I'm very slow today. So is Navarra. Will Anish try to flag him again? Mm, yes. I think Anish, deep down inside, he still feels a little 
bad about game number one. In spite of his preparation of it by announcing on the interview the other day that he's a flagger and that he would happily flag, I think he still feels bad he did this to David. Nah, he doesn't feel bad. G5 is a good move. If F takes G, then H takes G, followed by Rook to H8. Could be an idea, but Navarro decides to keep the H file closed. Goes at five, and they repeat moves. Another draw. Giri now, what's the score? 4 2 in the lead. And he gets up, probably to do a little dance, take a victory lap. But hopefully, he will come back. Where is, it? Where is he going? We don't allow breaks. What are the rules regarding like toilet breaks, for example? Do it at the board. Do they have a bottle, Something a bucket, like anything, but no. He's up three and a half, one and a half, not four two. Sorry, I can't count. <clears throat> Can you confirm or deny that there are discussions about making the Mr. Dodgy Invitational a tour? Um, I can confirm that there are definitely discussions about that being had. Um, one of them right now. And uh, I think I mentioned it in chat earlier. So that's two discussions already. That does indeed sound like, sound like more than one discussion. So do you think that in these trying times that we live in, the one thing we need is more online chess events? Um, yeah, we do always need more online chess events. And we've got more. We've got the, the big one next week. Oh, yeah, that's is it starting next week already? The Chess of the Masters? I don't know time. When does it start? The 20th? Oh, yeah, that's in like six days, yeah? Yeah, it starts on Saturday. Wow. Lots of, of good players. That's like eight of the top ten? I thought it was that's... six, but maybe. <laughs> I think it was the top six and like eight, eight out of ten. Ah, okay. I could yeah. be wrong. Let's look at the picture. We'll figure it out. Um, MVL, he's top ten. Grishok, he's probably top ten. He's top ten in classical. Magnus, I'm not sure. Karana's top ten. Rajabov, not top ten. Giri, depending on how you count. Um, Nakamura, top ten in Raps and Blitz, not in classical. Hare Krishna, ne. Wow, Rajabov is top 10. Ding. Ah, yeah, Rajabov, of course, he is top 10. Classical, apologies. Ding. Top 10 in classical and rapid for sure. As is Nepomneshi. Dubov and Artemiev, not in classical. So I'm not sure, depending. Yeah, that seems like eight. On how you count. Luis Rubio saying, tired to see same faces all the time. Change a bit, please. Who would you like exchange from that tournament, Luis Rubio? But who's going to win that tournament? And you can't say Magnus. Why can't I say Magnus? He's overdue. It's too easy. Hmm. So if I can't choose Magnus... Hmm. I don't know. I feel it's still... Magnus, Nakamura, Ding, those are the big favorites. Not Dubov? No, I don't think he's earned top three favorites status yet, although it was extremely impressive what he's done in, in the Abbey. But no, I would still rate Ding as slightly more likely than Dubov to win it. Ah, that's boring. I'll, I'll say Dubov. All right. What about MVL? Maybe we should rate MVL higher? Nah. Sorry. We have another game on the way. Anish Giri with the white pieces is playing the Italian, or as some people like to call it, the Gioco Piano, which means something like slow stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's reasonably boring. A bunch of pieces get exchanged and white is then hoping for a micro advantage because in this case it's not on e3 being slightly better placed than the knight on c6, which can't jump to as many squares as the other guy. But it looks very, very dry, especially with black having achieved a5, which means that white can't win space on the queen side with pawn to d4 or pawn to a5. 
So what happens after knight to f5? Usually you just try to exchange it off. You go knight e7. Then if you bring the other knight, we exchange one. Then we go king to h7, knight to g8, g6. Kick this knight out of f5 and equalize slowly and dully. Instead, Navarra got in d5. Which also is a structure that's usually fine for black. Put the rook on e8. It's equal. Is Giri, is Giri just, you know, trying to play it safe now with a two-point lead? Yeah. He's coasting. He's not going to take any risks with two-point lead. Not the first time anybody's ever accused Anish of not being a risk taker with a two-point lead. Maybe. I don't, think, I don't think many people take risks with a two-point lead, except Magnus. Even I think he's Magnus... probably the only one. It sometimes does. Magnus famously, he avoided, I think, a move repetition when it would have clinched him the world champion title against Anand. But even Magnus, I think nowadays, he's often quite pragmatic when it comes to making like a draw in the last round to win a tournament. Mm. Yeah, but if he's already won the tournament, there was a couple yeah. of times last year when he carried on. Yeah. For no good too. reason. I think he's become a little more practical also, or pragmatic, whatever you want to call it. For example, against Wesley So, when he was won the first game with the black pieces, he didn't mind a quick draw with the white pieces in the next one, as long as there's control. But yeah, we can't accuse Magnus of risk avoidery. Is this a little clumsy for Navarro? Could be a little clumsy. D4 is now all of a sudden looming. Pieces don't fully coordinate. F5 is not possible. Rook G3 is there. I probably wanted to go G5, but that's not threatening anything. White could still go D4. No, he's in some trouble now. So does White go F4 or D4? I would go D4 because I was taught to never touch the F pawn unless strictly necessary. But Giri, he might be a little more liberal when it comes to Facundo. Maybe. Aha. I'm getting a message from Peter Svidler that he's not home yet. I'm not sure what that means. But it's just, you know, to keep you updated on his whereabouts. That means he's, uh, he's outside in the world. Sounds unlikely. F4 played. You were right. I was wrong. The F4. I know, Geary. And I knew that if he had a chance to play F4, he'd just go for it. That's true. He does enjoy the bird. G5. Wow. This is escalating. I'm a little sleepy today. How about you? How did you deal with all the, the pressure, all the attention, all the obligations of running your own tournament? Has it been exhausting? It's not been too exhausting. It's, um, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. But most of the stuff I did was like videos and making memes, which I do all the time anyway. So it was fine. It's just a normal day. I, I say that a lot, that I have a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff to do. But whenever people call me out of it and say, like, what? I never have an answer. I always have to get back to Jordan Shlansky style reasoning that I have many very tasks and responsibilities. But I can see you're starting to use that corporate lingo, like all the behind-the-scenes stuff. You've been, you've been corrupted. Yeah, Not that's money true. Or fame. I feel I feel Not bad fame. now that I've pretended that I had lots to do. Yeah, there wasn't a lot. The smart people do most of the real work, like Satiris. He does all the shout out to Satiris, who, by the way, <clears throat> this I mean genuinely, is working pretty much non-stop, does so much more than me or anybody else showing up on camera, running all these shows, producing them, making sure the players are there, the players are on camera. 
the graphics are there. So shout out to him for his tireless work, even on half joke tournaments like this one. It's still real work going in. I'm sorry, half joke? Okay, even on complete joke tournaments like this <laughs> That's one, bad. there's still real work. Much going. better, much better. <clears throat> Rook one to f5. Is Giri breaking through? Uh, queen b3 is clever. Mm. Yeah, it looks like he is. Also, I can see the engine. And it, it definitely ah, okay. is. The engine likes white, I'm assuming. Very much. But I don't see anything. Yeah. I think it's just because Black's King is so weak. This gets, it survives for forever. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, maybe not now. Queen a8. The queen is still covering the f7 square. Uh, oh, this is beautiful. Rook g5. What a tactical uh, wizard. This is curious. Because if h g5, queen f6, king h7, rook h8 is checkmate. And similar things happen after rook g5. Navarra being the great sport that he is. Of course, allowing. No, I was going to say allowing checkmate on the board. Allowing one move before checkmate on the board. And Giri wins another game. What's the score now? I don't know, like, it was three and a half, one and a half, so let me calculate five, one and a half. I think it's five and a half to one and a half. Mm. No, four and a half. I, I don't know. We, we, we tried, but let, let's do it again. Three and a half, one and a half, plus one for Geary, plus zero for Navarra. And four and a half, two and a half. Yeah, that sounds about right. We'll, we'll say that's what the score is. Finally, we figured it out. And that means that Giri is two points away from tournament victory. They are playing the so-called English opening. Should be four check 92, but should be two short castles. These positions are strategically a little risky for black because even d5 does not rid him of his weaknesses. If white manages to get castles, queen c2, b3, bishop b2, you can sometimes suffer a bit here because these pawns are so weak. Therefore, Giri has to do something dynamic. I'm not quite sure what that is, like bishop a6, getting some play against e2. And I'm curious if he'll manage. Should G5 surprise me because it allows H6. Not sure if he wants to take here. Didn't like Bishop G5. <laughs> CD5, Bishop A6, targeting E2. This looks good for Black. Yeah, I didn't like this bishop g5 at all, giving the bishop, and now black gets all the all the activity. Queen d4, allowing bishop e2. But it looks fine for black for sure now. Not sure if he wants this. It's a pretty ugly pawn structure. But even this, I don't think black can be worse. D5 is saying. Probably white is to try dc6 here. Still. Something's gone wrong for Navarra. This knight f3, bishop g5 combination. I wasn't a big fan of. Looks tough. What's going on in this tournament? We have all these matches that appear close and then they turn out to be very one sided. Like Navarra Svidler was very one sided. Giri Korobov was very one sided. Today it's one sided so far. What's happening? I don't know. At first, the. The first round matches were more balanced, I think. Especially uh, Swiddler against Gandelius and the two Davids. They were very close matches. But then, I don't know, start to fall apart. Do you regret, in hindsight, that you invited all these Magnus Carlsen seconds? Like Peter Heine, Laurent, Niels? Um, I don't regret it, but they all... They were just there to get knocked out in round one. That was their job. Except for Nils. I thought Nils maybe had a chance. Right. Yeah, he so did, because were... he was up two points. But yeah, they did their job. 
what do you call that in the industry? It's like red shirts or something. Yeah? I don't know so what that's that is. called when someone's in a in a movie just to get just to get killed by. Oh, the that's hero a, that's a the Star Trek thing. Is it the red uniform guy? I think it's called red shirts. I think it's a term. Someone let us know. Twitch boys. I, I think it's a Star Trek thing. Boys. Red shirts term not term. Anish, in the meantime, has not taken on E2, but he's avoided the Queen Exchange with Queen to E7. Rook FC1. C takes D. Pawn to A3. Bishop back to T6. Still looks fine for Black, but yeah, Anish is not looking for any complications now with the two point, three point lead. And is just, you know, happy. Keeping it more or less under control. Feels like it's a little worse now. I'm not sure, though. How white can use it, but yeah, Queen C4. Four, attacking the rook, clearing that square for the knight. The bishop is also loose. Gary has to be careful. Yeah, it looks tricky now. Do you, do you think Anish has... Anish has definitely got a lot better at Blitz and Bullet in particular. But I can't think of anyone else who's done the same thing. Like That's really put, like, like put in a concentrated effort to get better at it and then just got a lot better. Yeah, I think in general, Anish is very systematic about most things he does in chess and within his training. Like most people that get good at Blitz, we just get addicted at a young age, play a lot of Blitz, and there you are. But Anish, I think he's made, he's decided, okay, chess is turning more into rapid and Blitz events, so I have to reorganize my training. Not so much calculation exercises and theory studies, but I have to get my hands dirty, start playing a lot of Blitz and Bullet, and he's done that maybe also because of Corona and lacking some of the board event, over the board events. But I think the results are showing he's just getting stronger very, very quickly at fast time controls. Yeah, no, he's been very impressive, and he beat Grischuk in a match as well. So that was And funny. speaking of very impressive, and beat Grischuk in a match, we are being joined by the seven till nine time, no one knows exactly, Russian champion, a man who clearly did not want the tournament victory in this one enough, but we are still very happy to have him here with us. Peter Svidler, what's happening? Uh, happy to happy to join the the stellar crowd on show. What's the score? I have been Anish uh, is crushing. It's like we are still debating the score, but somewhere around four and a half, one and a half. Okay, yeah, that. Uh... I, I guess I escaped, uh, you know, by getting an absolute drubbing at the hands of David. Maybe I did myself a favor because David at least was very nice about it afterwards. I have a feeling Anish wouldn't have been. I don't know. I think Anish just doesn't know how to express his feelings genuinely. And by mocking you, he expresses love and admiration. Those, those things, yeah. Definitely those things and no other also, things at all. Just to keep you updated, Anish broke Navara in game one because he flecked him in this bishop endgame, which, of course, he's a pawn up. He had every right to play on. But we all know that it's a draw and he made a lot of moves here. And one on time against poor David, who probably just, you know, could not accept or understand why such things are being done to him. And yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think David understands that this is, uh, you know, very much how this game is played. But yeah, probably wouldn't have done it uh, himself. You would assume, uh, considering the position in which he offered a draw to me in game one yesterday, when I had like a Gary's, second and a half. Gary's just offered him a draw in a winning position now. So. Yeah, but that's come on. That's now with a three-point lead, you can be a gentleman, Anish. That doesn't count. Come on. Also, why do that? Why not continue showing your true colors? That's a weird draw for no Peter. What's happening? Did he? Uh, maybe he blundered into a threefold. Yeah, maybe he stumbled into a threefold because I think if he is not far behind on the clock, he never, uh, he never repeats. I think he was like a minute down. But still, like there's zero risk, and uh, the position, as Jan said, probably is just flat out winning. So. 
Um, so yeah, and David two. is now reduced to playing the the Pirates, which is I don't think his normal repertoire. But yeah, it's a it's a correct uh, it's a correct call. It's also what I've done against David himself with marvelous results. That game was probably the the most miserable of the lot. Although I was a little bit upset by what, like, if I if I can express disappointment in uh, something that David has ever done in his life, if we still have access to the semifinal games, maybe if there is a chess drama, get your tweet ready, Peter, about uh, this David Navarro. Yeah, I'm that's... not sure I have the games here. I can try, maybe I do. Day two, here we are. Which one? Yeah, the very last game of the match. I go all the way down. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, here, yeah, you just scrolled past it. Uh, when he played Rook uh, DH1, move 23. Uh -huh. I mean, you can just resign here. The position is completely hopeless. But I played Bishop G5 with a very specific idea in mind. Rook H8, King G7. Rook H7, King F6. Knight D5, check. Uh, King E5. Bishop G3, check. King takes E4. Knight C3, mate. And I was very much looking forward to this being the final position of the match. And then he goes on and plays bishop h4 on move 26. Who does that? It is very upsetting. Mm -hmm. That did not spot the mate, but spots that bishop h4 is winning. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was heartbroken, honestly. I understand. Mm -hmm. There is a theory... Um, ah, it's scrolled past me now. I think it was Meslo saying on Twitch that you're putting a, up a brave face for the cameras, but he believes that you are broken up inside over not winning this tournament. Is that is that true? I am f f very, I mean, yeah, I, I actually wanted to do well in this one. I, I like it will come to, as a surprise to many, but I actually kind of care when I when I play and uh. Uh, yeah, the, this one in particular with the with the uh, you know amazing prizes up top, it will come. You know, I I, I will have to take some time to recover from this uh, stunning blow to my. Do you feel this is a serious worth. question? Do you feel that because you're being a nice guy and a good sports and all that, that people um, don't give you enough credit or they don't see that you actually do fight very hard and try to do well when you're playing? Do you feel your persona sometimes undermines that? Maybe, yeah, but uh, I don't I don't lose any sleep about it, but uh, I'm sure there's some of that. I'm sure you know, uh, people who kind of don't stop and think about it very hard, you know, might, might buy into the whole uh, into the whole, oh, I don't care and uh, uh, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Kind of, uh, kind of impression I maybe slightly project, but I think my career kind of suggests I, uh, I understand chess is a competitive game. Boom! That's what I keep telling people. Don't believe the act. He is not only a horrible person, but also you have to have a little fight in you to win the Russian championship six till ten times. Yeah, and, Mr. Doctor, uh, you're very quiet over there. Don't think that we've forgotten about you. I was going to question for Peter. Yeah, I was going to quietly mute and then just run away, but it's yeah. not how it goes. No, no, not not happening. No, we need <laughs> we need Dodgy to to be the face of this uh, marvelous event. And Anish is completely destroying once again. Although it, I it started off as a Pierce and then turned out to be some kind of a this an is old just a mainline dragon. No, this yeah, mainline dragon. Which I'm I'm a little bit surprised by David's decision to play Bishop takes D4 in this position, considering he is trailing by three points. I think yeah, you're supposed to play e5. You maybe have to try e5 or yeah, you have to play e5, bishop c5, knight, and bishop b6. And uh, yes, I think currently theory suggests white is better, but like, why would we care? Yeah, theory says this is maybe your best chance to equalize, but you don't have a lot of winning chances in. Yeah, I think I think sort of precisely precisely zero would be a good way to describe it. <laughs> mm. uh, like Anish now. He managed to pick up an exchange with his ninety seven. It's just winning again. Yeah, just rookie one, rookie seven, and uh, eventually things will start falling. It's. Uh... Well, this will be a good score if he gets to six 
Exactly, because then he can win the match with a draw. Oh. Wow, that would be poetic. So it's important that he didn't get to five and a half, because then he could win it with a win. Then. Or two draws. No, no one wants that. Yeah, that would be that would be very very off brand, obviously. But yeah, I caught the the business end of that conversation about Danish being a much improved blitz player, and uh, uh, I haven't watched a lot. But yeah, it, and yeah, now the, the night even goes. So yeah, that, that this game is over. So it's uh, six two, I assume. Exactly the situation I was in yesterday, and uh, yeah, not a pleasant situation to find yourself in for David. Yeah, then again, 6-2. It's you're losing by such a margin that you don't have to obsess so much on that one move or the one trick you missed. Therefore, yeah, that is that is very true. Yeah. Also, Mr. Dodgy, I think he has agreed to make that picture of himself on a horse publicly available. So maybe David feels pressure was off ever since he saw that picture. That could be. That's true. Yeah, I don't think Peter saw the picture when we put it on the uh, on the stream. Yeah, well, I wasn't there, so uh, let's, be, let's put up the picture before. As per usual, so, you know, life life completely know. passes me by. Can you see that, Peter? Yeah, I can. I can. Let me let me maximize that. Hang on, what? What happened there? Ah, there it is. That is a very uh, quarantine-looking horse. It didn't have a like. Clearly, it, it also needs a haircut. Wow! Shots fired at the horse. I didn't see no, that. No, no, it's a very. It's I a didn't very see fetching. that coming at all. That's, it's that's... a. It's a. It's a very fetching look, but uh, like I can. I can definitely recognize that. Uh, you know that. Uh, I can barely see through all the hair feeling that it that's, might that's be experienced. That's fine, guys. It's just, it is my mother-in-law's horse, and she is watching, so... No, no I've, I've very, very attractive horse. Uh, please, Dodgy's mother-in-law. This is this is fabulous. Don't 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 take this the wrong Get way. Get it together, horse. You don't have horse barber shops over there? <clears throat> also, without wanting to get too political, but with all these statues being torn down, now there's a debate about what statues we should get rid of. And one point that has come up over and over again, we should get rid of all the ones where some guy is sitting on a horse because we don't trust them. And I was wondering if Mr. Dodgy feels the same way. I really didn't think that's where you were going with that. I thought you were going to say, we, if we get rid of all these statues, we need to replace them with something. And it should be. <laughs> yeah, that, I, honestly, that was, that, was also, that was also what I expected to, to end with, with that argument. Yeah, that. That Let's would have been a better point to make, but I'm, yeah. not, I'm not very fast. Let's replace it. sort of old, pasty white men on horses with young... Um, you can say pasty, it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, anyway. I Another don't thing I recently learned, which I'm sure the viewers are dying to hear in some chess commentary, is that people like me, but especially also from the United Kingdom, we are so pasty because we do not get a lot of vitamin D, which is produced through sunlight, and your body produces more if you are super pale. Is that is that true? Uh, who exactly are you addressing this specifically medical question to? I think between the two of you, you, you should have the answer to that question. I thought, and didn't that start with? Didn't that start with? I've recently read, and then you asked us. Yeah, we are the, the leading authorities on things and but, stuff. But didn't also. you recently read it, Jan? Did, oh, I heard that it on the part? podcast. Both. So, both so then you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, sometimes people on podcasts they say things that aren't true. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the game. Anish Giri. With the black pieces needs to yeah that's the to win that's the, the Carlson game against somebody and I'm kind of racking my brain to remember exactly who the game where I got into a lot of hot water by saying that black's position is strategically lost by move 10 and people chose either to kind of uh, purposefully misunderstand or really couldn't couldn't really understand the difference between actually lost and strategically lost when you have dynamic counterplay uh, and gave Why is me... it that you keep getting into one shitstorm after the other, Peter? At some <laughs> point, don't you have to ask yourself, is it always the people or maybe is it me? It, it definitely is pretty much always me, but uh, 
uh, I seem to be completely unable to to keep my feet out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Did Navarro win a pawn? Yeah, David is doing quite well in this one, I think. Uh, in particular, if you consider the tournament situation, there's still compensation, of course, because there's this uh, dark square weaknesses um, uh, on the king's side. But he did he did get a lot of progress uh, uh, on the other side of the board. So some hope for some f- some hope for the match to to continue here. But I get the feeling that uh, Anish will still trick him somehow and survive. I don't know. This feels like a tough one. Mr. Dodgy, before we let you go, do you have, first what of all... Oh, we don't let him go. Yeah, that's smart, actually. I'm I'm very upset by this. What? Oh, that, that was all a right, tease. Sorry. That we can't was... go. We can't upset Peter. Wow, I was really baited there. I was... I had my... My mouse hovering over the mute button. <laughs> no, no, not happening. Who do you think is going to win this match? Um, I think it's probably going to be Giri. Wow, that's a hot take. I yeah. was going to say the Caruana Carlson match later tonight. Yeah, I, I somehow completely missed day one. And when I checked back to, to, to see what happened there, I was kind of stunned at the amount of bloodshed and also at how how even it was because normally I think when these two guys play you know if somebody won two games out of six in a day that person is going to be far ahead <laughs> and and they both want to and and the, the match is still completely level even with all the clutch uh, uh, shenaniganry going on so they won one clutch thing each right but today yeah. I think it is the clutcher yeah today today is the the proper clutch clutcher to, yeah and uh yeah, I'm, I, I, I will, I will watch that. So yeah, Bishop to Queen C8 probably is a bit of an issue. Ooh. So, I guess Rook B8 is about the only move you can even make. And he's just losing this one. He's having too much fun in this tournament, so he wants to prolong it a little. Yeah, it's, it's. Yeah, I, I think it's a possible take. Queen C4, I guess, is what David is is, is planning here. Pick up on a four, and uh, you know, get the queen to good squares and so on. Mister Dodge, you have another question, which is half trolling, but also half genuine interest, because I don't follow these things very closely, but sometimes I hear some stuff. I hear there's a lot of turmoil on chess Reddit, and I have a feeling you would know about these events. What's what's going on there, just for beginners? Um, I did read about it, but I don't, I don't post on Reddit. I posted once on Reddit. This is, okay, this is you're true. also not a Redditor. No, I, I, I thought you might be. That was a genuine question. Peter, do you know? Like, <laughs> Well, I was um, going to say um, that I have been reading it all, but what I was going to say is that I, the one thing that I've posted on Reddit uh, was deleted by the moderator who they seem to be having problems with, and it was about this tournament. <laughs> so that was my um, only contribution to Reddit. So, so, so uh, an, actual, were... an actual Mr. Dodgy tried posting something about the Mr. Dodgy Invitational, and that got removed. I tried We've to post had the, the talk trailers. about horse nudity, though, so maybe you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but yeah, it seems to be a lot of fun. Um, but I think it's over now. I think it's all calmed down and everyone's friends again. What I heard, once again, this is mainly half knowledge, is there there was a mod or the main moderator that was deleting a, a lot of stuff and other people weren't happy with it. Is that is that the story, more or less? From from what I saw, yeah, that that seems to cover it. Uh, Anish is winning again, which is Oof. kind of. Uh, uh, I, I'm just glad Chess Twenty Four doesn't have any moderators that I'd like. That. That's, that's yeah, I'm that would be for. that would be absolutely disastrous if we had. Does Chess Twenty Four have any moderators? Mm-hmm. How dare anyway, you? just you know, pitching an idea here. The CP Coulter Invitational. Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah, we we all we all need, to, and uh, obviously the first prize is a full collection of Phil Helmuth, uh, Phil Helmuth books. <laughs> first prize, a poker book. <laughs> Not just one, obviously, because that that wouldn't be enough. And uh, yeah, Anish does does the uh, finish it off. Congratulations to Anish Giri. He does win even this game and clinches the tournament. Wow, seven two. Wow. Wow. What a match by Anish. 
and apparently we are being joined in on the program by not the winner who's probably doing a little victory dance but the man who lost these finals but no they're both here david navara and anish giri are joining the show david welcome good afternoon good evening uh, i was playing too slowly today and too badly i mean it started with the first game when i lost on time in a draw and game and uh, i mean i was playing too slowly and uh, in the last game i should have played rookie seven instead of rookie four of course but i got nervous when being already short of time i thought instead of knight takes h6 knight e7 check knight c6 was winning uh, in the last game and i thought knight takes yes, knight six felt uh, felt like it gives me some practical chances i think before i think 96 knight c6 was a forced win um, 97 96 yeah and what about rook e7 yes yes you are right uh, yes, uh, maybe uh, other ways. This is what I thought the wins on the spot. Yes, you are right. And if I play rook e7 instead, do you have queen d8 or is that rook e7? Ah, possibly h6, king g7, uh, rook rook f7, king no, h6. Seven first, yeah, uh, thirty-one. Move thirty-one. Rook ah, yes, you are so right. It works. works. <laughs> yes, uh, you you are right. Not e7 is the best move. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you are winning, yeah. I mean, I only saw one win for you. Uh, this also looks... Although this is not so easy, right? This is not clear. Yeah, yeah. It's, after my move, I believe this to be the way, but uh, it's not... Yeah, I missed uh, I missed C3, though I think I feel I still have a fine compensation after that. Um, I mean, I, this game I misplayed a little bit, yeah. Anish, let's get to the real question. This is Did my you prize, feel yeah? a little bit bad after flagging in game one? Yeah, like for the next three games, I was you know, mentally justifying myself, trying to find excuses. Yeah, you know, well, to be to be frank, like, you, first of all, the easiest excuse that people can say is that uh, when you are like the one with an extra pawn, you can do it, yeah? Not right. the way around. Mm -hmm. um, the other excuse you can say is that before that, it was not so easy if it was a draw, and I simplified into it with an intention to flag. I mean, I don't know, there can be many excuses, but of course, uh, I mean, it's part of the, like, I feel it's part of the game without increment. And I felt a little bit, I felt actually a little bit good when David uh, tried to do the same against me with the knight against bishop on three against three. And I was really hoping he would get close because then I would feel much better. But fortunately, that one I, I held. Actually, it was not so easy as well. The knight against sure. the bishop is more easier to play with the knight. But. Sorry, Anish, I would not have done this uh, normally, but if you started, I decided yes, to play yes. according no, it's, to the general rules. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you that you did it, because it made me feel much better about myself. Uh, but I, I mean, I very much respect David, and he knows that, and I don't think he feels disrespected no, by, by this. I mean, I, I think it's part of the, the game, no? Or, Mm, yes, it's part of the game, but it's not quite about, uh, not that much about chess. Uh, I mean, no, no, it's, it's of course, yes. To try it, but I mean, I was not very happy, understandably. Yes. No, no, I understand, I understand. But I mean, that it was not um, like it was definitely nothing personal. I mean, I would have done it against absolutely anyone. And uh, I think that's, I would expect anyone to do it against me as well. So, uh, especially if you, uh, yeah, if you have less time and, uh, but okay, again. Uh, uh, I, for the way I see it is that there is a 50 move rule, there is a zero fold, and uh, uh, especially if you have like a playable position like this. I mean, I would have tried to create the last pass pawn, then wait till the bishop is, you know, try to win the bishop, and so on, but yeah. It's, uh, so, so you had like three different excuses, and you didn't just say, I wanted to win the picture of the horse. That's... Because uh, everyone oh, would no, understand that. I, I, no, I just oh, want yes, to... Yes, yes. Yeah, I just want one. to... Uh, uh, clarify something here. So one of the excuses offered by Anish was he had a, <laughs> he had a much better position earlier, and then he simplified specifically the flag, and that yeah. is somehow and that is somehow is listed as an excuse. No, I mean I. The thing is, like, in order to properly try to win it, I would need to take a lot of time, and uh, I just yeah no 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 I, yeah, no this is this is yeah. perfect methodology. What you've done yeah. is is the right is the right way to go about things. Okay. I'm just very like. In, in in my head, this is like sort of premeditated murder. This is not an ah, excuse. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually, even worse. It's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it makes it it makes it much worse. I Second think. degree but, instead of the first degree. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, it's uh, point, but yeah. but uh, but it was listed as an excuse, which made me very interested for a second. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Anish, but yeah. there 
there is no way how black can win this if white holds the king on f2 and uh, just takes care not to lose uh, any pawns. But I mean, you okay, mean four, uh, four against my three, yeah? that I lost the mm -hmm. pawn earlier, uh, that I had lost the pawn earlier, of course. Oh, it's a bit of a cultural debate. We talked about this with Ani. No, 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 can yesterday. I ask, sorry, can I ask, can I ask, what if I uh, put the king on d2, bishop on d3, pawn on e4, then I go f5, then I go g5, and then I try to go like f4, ef, e3, and e2. Is okay, but I, ha I have I'm a to g pawn, so if it, once you exchange yeah. bishops, uh, unless I do it in a very uh, silly way, uh, no, sorry, please uh, don't show such moves. I mean, uh, this was to the annotators, but I mean, if you play this f4, the only thing which I cannot do is uh, to play king g3 and exchange bishops on d3 and push my pawn on g8, uh, losing to queen g1 check. But uh, uh, no, no, but, but I mean, yeah, this position like uh, with four against three, yeah. If let's say I bring the king to d2, then um, bishop to e d3, let's say, and then I try this if you have the king on f2, then okay, I'll try then I push. Then I push bishop f7, so I exchange the pawns before you uh, succeed in executing the breakthrough. Are you also fe fe maybe at some point, yeah? Uh, I meant bishop, uh, just when you, once you play mm -hmm. e4, I have bishop f7 forcing you to play g5, so. Yeah, yeah, no, but, uh, yeah, no, I uh, I think the best, the best excuse was the, the one Mr. Doji came up with, that I was really going for the horse. That would have been uh, the no, best but it's. One. I think this debate will come up no, more and more because it's ah, okay. a bit of an issue for guys like David and I'm assuming Peter. Although Peter, you never know, that probably would not do that. It might become a competitive disadvantage if it becomes the norm to flag in such positions. No, so I think the culture really, will have this, to decide this, this everyone position? does this or uh -huh. no one does this. No, but you find this position. You really find it. I mean, I. Oh, okay, I, I think know. this position, of course, you play on. I'm an extra pawn. Yeah, no? <laughs> I have a. I mean, also, bishop takes g2. Did you see this move earlier when I took on g2 instead of b7? I mean, what this? I, you know, it was kind of a nice move, and it was all for nothing, or what? <laughs> I mean, otherwise, bishop b7, I can play four against four. I had to see. I saw this move, bishop g2. I mean, it already started earlier. Rook b6 is a very interesting move because if a7, I go to b1, rook a1. So in a way, uh, yeah. I mean, in a way, I'm sort of try to win a pawn but yeah no, i mean obviously uh, my reason was i'm gonna help you here that you would have done this against anybody and it would have definitely. been disrespectful if you didn't do it against david because he's such oh nice that's such a good one that's such a good one okay that's beautiful okay sorry <laughs> yeah it's, it's such a good one but it's not what you said <laughs> sorry can i <laughs> pass to another game because to me it Please, doesn't make sense to yeah, speak sorry, all definitely. the time about game one <laughs> <laughs> which game would you like to talk about i don't know uh, any other you know, I can tell you one thing uh, just before we finish this. One time, a uh, long, long time ago, I played Magnus on, uh, in Alicia's title, Arena Bullet, and he flagged me in Rook against Rook, no pawns. Yes, it Okay, but so, what does it have to do with me? No, nothing, nothing. Yes, I admi admit you, were, uh, you had the right to play for the win. I just uh, was uh, un understandably unhappy about the way how the game ended, of course. Yes, I saw this b5, maybe I should have played knight a5 immediately because uh, I saw b5 coming, but I haven't, I missed the bishop g6 and uh, I think young, um, young Lebon played something similar, but he played it better with white, so it was... Knight it works, takes e5 right? doesn't work, yeah? Knight takes e5 doesn't work by any chance. Yeah. Uh, I think it doesn't, you have check on d4. Yeah, not immediately. But I was thinking maybe 95, maybe the, let's say it takes everything and then maybe slowly you win a piece back. But I, I don't think so, yeah. I didn't uh, really... Okay, even if I won the piece back, you put your queen on e5, uh, play bishop d yeah. 6 and have a great compensation. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's what I thought as well. That's what I thought as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I, b5 felt like it was uh, uh, played in the right moment. And after knight e3, bishop g6 is important and I think it already works. Maybe knight a5, like you said, yeah. You're just I'm winning a pawn, kind of. Yes, I was trying to make some tactics work, but it didn't. Did you prepare for this game, Anish? There was something similar in David's match against Peter, no? Um, with colors I've, reverse, so... Ah, yeah, yeah. colors reverse, okay. No, but good. it's a common position. I've played, like, well, recently I played the match with uh, Adli. Uh, like, I caught him on bullet and I played, like, I don't know, 20 games in this position. 
and afterwards I analyzed uh, all of them. So uh, yeah, I was well prepared here. Anish played it also with white against Wesley, so but yeah. with knight b3 instead. Knight b3, bishop b6, a4, a5, uh, bishop e3, and uh, black equalized, and it finished in a draw. No, but to be honest, it's a um, it's just a, a major, major theoretical tabia. Yeah, it's not like I cannot, I didn't really prepare for it, but I was aware of its existence and I knew the ideas with b5. I had a game like this uh, in a pro chess league as well with b5 against uh, some player. I forgot his name, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a theme. And I guess Adli, I played B5 like 10 different games too. So it's a, yeah, it's a position. Uh, white has white can also play Knight B3 instead of Knight C4, and White can play Knight H4 sometimes. Many different ideas. Yes, Bishop D2 is an idea as well. Yeah, just a, it's just a position like a big tabia yes. that uh, yeah, it's hard to prepare something special because White has also he can play King H1 if he wants, or and then I'm yes. out of books. So. But somewhere here was already tough for White. Yeah, there's no no way. Yeah. All right, what other? Okay, I misplayed What's this position there? because I should have uh, kept the knights uh, in other way, but uh, I don't know how exactly. I mean, I should uh, exchange one rook, uh, uh, keep the other one, and keep my knight maybe on e2, but certainly not on c2. Are you and, sure you uh, want to keep uh, try to play on the king side? Are you sure you want to keep, uh, like, you don't want to keep all the four rooks on the board? I felt a bit relieved when one pair went off, but I don't know if it's, maybe it's just me. Mm, yes, maybe you are right. Yes, you are yeah, right. I think I should play something similar. Yeah. And you should keep uh, four rooks. Four rooks. Playing yeah, some yeah. rook CB1 move in a similar structure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you no. are right. Uh, I just got confused. But uh, I think that, uh, well, the advantage in this position is not uh, not, not so major. Yeah, It's, it's really yes. hard to convert. You, you just have to... Yeah, yes, you have knight c6, uh, so that's the problem. And I probably should have played it differently, maybe f4 uh, on the previous move to prevent you from playing knight e5, knight c6. And maybe not... Okay, does it work now? Rook a, no, rook hg1, but uh, maybe another... Oh, like that, yeah. Yeah, but I don't... Uh, I mean, it's position, like, let's say even if I make... if Even if I don't get knight c6, it's just the position that... I mean, it's like a long way to go still for both. Uh, and I, I was quite happy here. I was up on the clock uh, quite substantially. So I felt that uh, my chances are not so bad. Mm. Do you think, Joel, Anish, this type of end games is an acceptable outcome for Black? Because, like in correspondence chess, they just make a draw here. But over the board, it's still not something no, you I, want, right? No, I, uh, to be frank, I um, slightly messed up the opening. Uh, I landed in a position where, which is not part of my repertoire. And uh, uh, sorry, Peter Sittler here is writing like for the past 10 minutes that he wants to go. Can you just let him go? Ah, sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, of course you can, Peter. You can also say something. Bye. Uh, yeah, if if I'm back on air, which is was sort of specifically the idea uh, I, I had in mind when I was writing was not to be back on air, but uh, <laughs> this does gives me this does give me an opportunity to uh, to congratulate Anish, which I haven't done yet, and. Uh, uh, well played, and uh, this was an incredibly fun thing. I hope I hope it reemerges, uh, and uh, that of course is an is an audition to get reinvited. But also, I genuinely hope it reemerges <laughs> at some point. Uh, thanks to Dodgy for you know not giving up on it when uh, the entire world was laughing at him hysterically. Uh, and yeah, well played to the winners. Thanks so much, Peter Swidler. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for playing. Okay, no, good luck next to time. Anish, who played better today? Uh, uh, okay, and he won deservedly the match. Uh, should you have any more questions? Feel free to ask me about some games. Uh, but uh, okay, it, I it, want to ask you about your overall impressions. Yesterday, the match went so well for you against Swidler. Do you feel you played weaker today, or did Anish play so much better? Both? What, what uh, both. Uh, I mean. Uh, with me in Blitz, uh, much depends on my form. And uh, yesterday I slept well, uh, so it was fine. And today, I mean, uh, I had a very silly idea to prepare for the match seriously because I had not prepared uh, seriously for about two months. Uh, okay, I prepared for the European uh, Online Championship, but otherwise uh, I was not studying openings, so I did some work but uh, okay six hours it's not a good idea to say the least uh, i mean ah, okay, so I, so you tired i was just out. playing too slowly then and i was tired 
but it's my own fault that I prepared so much. I hear you. Anyway, I think people greatly enjoyed your play in this event, the match against the other day with the fantastic victory against Peter Svidler. So thank you so much, David Navarra. Yeah, thank you, you are David. welcome. All right, Anish, any last words? Would you like to, I don't know, address people? What will you do with the picture of Mr. Dorty on a horse? Will you hang it up on your wall? I think, uh, I, do, I don't know why Peter wanted it so badly. I'm thinking maybe to sell it to him. <laughs> ah, that's good thinking. What do you think that picture? Of so because, you know, people, the people think that there, there is not so, like, the, this tournament is wonderful, obviously, but they think that the... Um, uh, the first prize is like they think it's a joke yeah or it's not not serious like unlike magnus carlson invitational or you know where it's like eight thousand euro or whatever here they think it's a joke this uh, but i have a suspicion that you know this picture could be worth a lot you just have to find the right customer which is why i took part as well and uh yeah i'm hoping to you know to make use of this victory i'm not going to buy the picture <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I, you're not the one I had in mind. I think Peter is my, my main customer uh, for now, yes. What people should buy, however, is David's book, of course, My Chess World, out now. I hear it's 600 pages for 64 games. I read Anish's book, and that was like 38 pages for 20 games. So you do the math that you get a lot more notes in David's more book. More value, more value. No, my, my book was, uh, was uh, you know, it was uh, not a... Uh, it was a booklet, I would say, booklet. Uh, I enjoyed your book, My Junior Years in Chess, get that. It was like too. an ap appendix to something, like it was, you know, it was just a small uh, little thing. That, but David's book is, of course, uh, definitely, a, you know, substantial work. And uh, I think every, every chess lover is going to buy it, I'm, I'm, I'm no doubt. Okay, I believe that brings us to the end of the tournament. Congratulations to the winner, Anish Giri. Congratulations to David Navarra, the runner-up. And the last word, of course has the man who made it all possible, Mr. Dorchi himself. I know he loves that he can have a little chance to address the pe people out there. Thanks, everybody. I've had fun. Bye. Okay, I'd just like to say thank you to all the players who turned up and some of them who were invited quite late. So thank you very much, especially to them. And big congratulations to Anish for winning such a prestigious event. And he will always have won the very first edition of this tournament, which will probably only get bigger and bigger. So well, wow. thank you, everyone. Is this is you know when people uh, when in major tournaments they they announce this uh, that there's going to be future editions. There's usually a standing ovation. So I think that there we do standing ovation now for Doji and hope for for more of his events to come. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>